Just tables with mics and a full of chairs. Thank you. 
Mr. Perry, son, do you have a little bit of a I'd like to call the planning commission meeting to order for March 28th, 2023. Can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, a nation indivisible. Roll call, please. Donnie? Here. Tom? Here. Josh? Here. Candy? Here. Kevin? Here. James? Here. If I could get approval of the agenda for tonight, please. Motion to approve tonight's agenda. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Who was the second? It was James. Tom? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Josh? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? Yes. Candy? Yes. And approval of the February 28th minutes. Motion to approve February 28th minutes. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call, please. Candy? Yes. Tom? Yes. James? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Josh. Yes. Okay, now we move into the comments from citizens. This is comments from anything that's not on our agenda tonight. So if you've got any comments that you'd like to make, please come up to the podium, state your name, address, and try to limit to three minutes. Not seeing any. How about any activity online? Nothing online. Okay, we will move past that one. We don't have any old business. Um, no new business. So we're going to actually go into the public hearing now. I'm going to call that to order. And our first public hearing is the variance for Copart of Arkansas Incorporated. And I believe who's going to open that one up? How about I just read it? Then we'll ask for the citizens' comment. Copart Arkansas is requesting a variance from the Required 100-foot buffer from auto-wrecking salvage yards. They are requesting that this be reduced to 25-feet buffer. So if I've got anybody in the audience that would like to comment on this specific variance, now is your time. Anybody online? No, sir. Okay, not seeing anybody on that item. We will close that item. On to number two is a conditional use permit. 
Copart, Arkansas has requested a conditional use permit to allow an auto wrecking salvage yard within a, uh, within a one res uh, industrial uh, zoning that we currently have. We've got anybody out in the audience that would like to talk on this specific issue, please. Commissioners, I will let you know there are there is a letter for both the variance and the conditional use in your packet if you have not seen it as of yet. So. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Kenneth Lovett, eighteen seven zero two Clearwater Road. Um, I've missed some of the original discussion, but uh, we've got uh, requirements in the in our books that says it needs to have a curb. It needs to have a curb. Um, whether it be 100 feet, 50 feet, whatever. I drove by the place out there uh, close to uh, Lincoln. They got a beautiful fence. They got it all sealed back up in there. It all looks clean. But in my opinion, if it needs to have a curb in Tawny Town, it needs to have a curb. If they're 400 feet back there, I can't see building it 400 feet. But that first initial section needs to look nice. You're requiring I, to a... Uh, oh, there's no comment, sorry. Didn't mean to I can't ask the object to you. This is strictly. <laughs> but you wanted to do that for a long time. This is strictly. This is strictly just uh, comments from the. And citizens. we're talking about the the the, the wrecking yard, right? Correct. The salvage but, yard. You know, yes. in Lincoln, it looks it looks nice, yeah. but it needs to have that initial curbing and appeal in the in the first section of it. Thank you, sir. Any other comments? Brad, anybody online? I am going to close that specific item and we're going to move on to item number three, which is a variance for what's that number, look, gentlemen? 20, 2398. 2398, yes, Thank sir. You. East Rush Creek Road. Applicant is requesting variance for R1, lot size of 120 foot width to 100 foot width of construction of a new house. We have anybody that would like to? I am. We are. Yeah. Hang on, just the a second. Owner, but okay. I'm going to let her speak. Okay. For us on that because it's going to be her. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Yeah, so we're the buyer. Um. So we've previously just state your you. state your name and sorry, Summer Goldman. Um. We we are the buyers. Um. We do live here in Ta Tawny Town. We live in Hidden Valley Estates, and um, wanting to move out to Brush Creek, we've previously asked for permission for the rezoning to um R one, which was granted um at City Hall. So thank everyone for your um, participation in that. And so now, um, a lot of the talk around the rezoning and some of the concerns was the flood zone, and um, so we've we've mentioned several things about that. But the reason we're asking for the variance is to um help that issue. So um, it's two acres and we could have split it east to west in the center, but then that bottom acre would have been completely in the flood zone. So we're asking to do a lot split that will go north and south, which will allow both of us to, to um, build our houses in the top part and both will actually be out of the flood zone. It will help with septic. Um, we've already done our soil testing and spoken with them about that. And so um, it's just going to be a better configuration for the lots all the way around for um, our homes to be up out of the flood zone. Awesome. And could I get your name again? I I just got buyer in my head. And I know, I know you're buying <laughs> property, so Summer Goldman. Thank you. Thank y'all. Any other comments on this specific variance? Anybody online? No, sir. Okay, we are going to close that, and we're going to adjourn the public hearing, and we are actually going to go into our board of zoning adjustments right now and i'm going to go ahead and call the boarding of zoning adjustments to order and our first item is the variance of corp copart uh requesting the variance to request a hundred hundred foot buffer of the auto zone rather than the 25 is uh who's discussing this tonight for us anybody is courtney courtney would you like to speak mm. yes can you guys hear me okay yes okay um so this variance is with a is with is part of a bigger project. Within this project submission, there is a submission for a conditional use permit, this variance, a waiver, and a large scale development. So what the applicant is really requesting is to have a salvage yard situation in an industrial zone. 
And what the code says is that you must have a hundred foot buffer. Um, I'm not sure why that's all running into each other and looks very strange. Um, but you have to have a hundred foot buffer uh, along, along on the edges and the applicant is requesting to vary this down to 25 feet because of the, the, um, the way the property is laid out. If they had a hundred foot buffer, it takes up a lot more space out of their area. So they plan to have um, a total of a very small 400 square foot operations trailer and parking lot. And they are requesting this variance. And so what we look at when we when we go through the variance request is the different um, code. And so the first one is that <clears throat> we um, look at the literal interpretation of the code would deprive the rights uh, of the applicant. And so my response to that is that the site could be developed with the buffer requirements. The use requested by the applicant does require a larger buffer area than what is otherwise allowed in this area. We look at special circumstances. Um, the applicant did purchase an existing parcel of land. The shape and the layout of the land is not the uh, result of the applicant. And then we look at granting the variance, whether it will um, confer any special privilege that is denied by zoning regulations to other land, as this is a conditional use permit <clears throat> and it has to get several different approvals. This should not prevent the orderly subdivision or development of other land in the area if the variance is allowed. <clears throat> And then we look at the conformance with the requirements for the zoning district, and they they will um, be in compliance with all the zoning district if they move forward with this variance. It doesn't take anything from that. And then we do look at granting the waiver to or the variance to see if it would be injurious to the neighborhood or otherwise detrimental to public welfare. So looking at the surrounding areas and per, and looking at the fencing and buffering that's provided, staff does not find that this would be injurious to the neighborhood where it is located at this time. So the planning commission has, or I'm sorry, the board of zoning adjustments has the right to take all of those different provisions of the code and weigh them as they feel necessary. Um, staff is recommending approval of the applicant's variance request to re reduce the required buffer from 100 feet to 25 feet, as long as the fencing and landscaping is installed per the applicant's letter. And Brad, I do think you were showing a picture of the um, fencing and landscaping. Yes, so they've agreed to upgrade to the green fencing uh, versus the white panel fencing as it will blend in better to the environment. And they do have a significant landscape plan <clears throat> that they provided as well. And all of this is based on surrounding property in the area and what what is adjacent to it. Again, this is already zoned industrial, but they do have to get a conditional use permit as part of this requirement as well. It's just, we always hear the board of uh, zoning adjustments hearings first. So I know it's a little out of order, um, but th that's what we're hearing right now is for the variance approval to reduce the buffer. Thank you, Courtney. I would ask for, an uh, for a motion to approve this. I make a motion to approve this. Second. Got a motion second. We can get discussion now on this specific variance. Um, Brad, can you pull up the um, zoning map around that area? I'm not I'm not understanding the hardship for this first variance. Uh, can is there somebody here that can speak? I believe the applicant is online. There's the gentleman coming up to the podium. My name is Eric Trumbach. I work for Coke Park. I'm property manager. The variance is it's pretty steep. We bring in these cars. Each lot is about 12 by 40. I'm sorry, 12 by 20. And every car we can stack in there. That's our that's the nature of our, of our business. So if we have a hundred foot buffer, the way the property is shaped, it takes a lot out of what we can do to move around. We have big loaders that take these cars on and off. We just, everything's stacked on the ground in its own individual space. We don't stack them vertically. So we, we do require a little more space than what most people think. What, what is the size of the existing property? I, I do not know. John Blinker could answer that way. Uh, yes, John Blanker with Westwood. Um, 
the total property is 25 acres, I believe. That's a very small facility for us. In the red is C2? Correct, the red is C2. The light blue is the industrial area. So I guess to understand your hardship is that if you go to the code, to the standards of the city is providing, you're going to lose some operational space. Acreage. We have to redesign everything. Um, it's not lining up with the way we usually have a yard laid out. So it might terminate the purchase of this property. <clears throat> Thank you. Yeah. Kind of on the, do you have do you have a map that shows that's in the physically yes where you know what I'd like I'd, I'm curious what residences what personal property is around it give me one moment go to the large scale here. This is the property right here. Okay. Yes. So, so Lewis is where uh, Mike Mike Lewis's property there to the the east. Is that right, Mike? My, 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 did I have my bearings right? That's correct. That's what it yes. looks like. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, just to inform you, I mean, they're they're required to send out a 200 foot uh, radius. They, that letter has to be within a 200 foot. So whether Lewis's fall into that or not, I don't know. But they are required to send out for the variance 200 foot uh, requirement. And what is that, Brad? It's looks like it's already there. What is that construction? Yes, that's an existing. Uh, I don't know, coffee junkyard or. Yeah, it's kind of like an RV park. Yeah. With storage area. So will that remain? No, no not if not if it goes through and purchased. <clears throat> okay. And once again, there's a large scale development that goes along with this, but we're taking it piece by piece. Okay. Thank you. I mean, I, I kind of agree with James a little bit. 100 foot to 25 foot, it's a pretty big reduction. And in their letter, it says, uh, in order to increase the usability of the property and make the development of this property economical. So they, they need the variance to make more money. Or make money, I guess. Mm -hmm. Very good. Other questions? Can I ask one question, please? You sure can. And approximately how many employees we all have? There's probably going to be four in and four out. Say that again in the mic. Four employees in the office and four in the yard. Gotcha. We're, we consider ourselves to be an online auto auction. But we fall into the salary category. And there will be a pretty nice landscaping on the outside with that green fence as well. So these cars will be for resale. They're not junk. No, they're not junk. We don't own crash. Yeah. They're only going to be on the lot for 50 to 60 days at the most. And we sell them online. We have to turn them in. They're owned by the insurance company. And we provide services of selling, liquidated. It's interesting following the salvage. And may I ask another question? So it appears that the property owners to the property owner to the south and to the let's see of the entrance. That's the same property owner, I guess who you're buying it from. And then uh, 
So the setback is okay with him, obviously. So Look, it, 25 feet off. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I mean I'm saying the, the variance is okay with him. I, obviously, he's got sells cars there. So, and then it looks like that this uh, other fence to the east side going north and south, that's, a, there's a uh, power line easement that goes right through there. So I think that's about a hundred yards from, I'm just saying from the Lewis's property line, that easement I believe is 300 feet. Those are right hands pretty, pretty big, pretty big. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there's an industrial track to the north. I don't know anything about the property to the west, on the upper west right there. Apparently they're not here to say anything against it, but just trying to get bearings here. So the uh, track Looks six, like there's, there's an industrial property right there. I can't remember. I think it's a, it's off some pipe. It's farmland. No, no, on the, to the um, it's south of Liberty Road. Brad, can you go back? Yeah, the other map that has its name, the property owner's name. Yeah, right there. Craig Craigmeister Properties. Yeah, I believe that's a that's a business. They do uh, tubing or piping or something. Okay, let's see. You know, okay, that's all. I was just want to make sure, just seeing kind of what's around there. Okay, thank you. And your only entry exit point will this long piece here from 412. Yeah, the fire department wants to have a gate at the back. Though. Okay, for Liberty. Yeah. Yeah, they there's another exit point on Liberty, correct? In the very back, correct. Okay. So we'll keep it closed unless fire department needs to come in. Okay. One way in, one way out. Sorry, I'm sure. We get all these questions again when we get to the other part. Okay. Any other questions? We're just discussing the variance, right? Right now. Okay. It seems like a big variance. Big difference. <laughs> it is a big difference. It's a big difference to us. Yeah. It's a big difference from what we require to. Yeah. And we agreed to extra landscaping and stuff like that because of that. Make it look nice. All right. Can I make a comment? If you'd like. Just a comment to mm -hmm. me is is so far set back and and what's around it. I, I I don't think seventy-five feet from four twelve, you can even tell much of a depth perception. The the, the property owners around it are they're are industrial too, more, more or less. I mean, it doesn't I don't know why that should it doesn't bother me a bit. It's like you're you're that is it land they're paying for and they're going to make it nice it's going to look good i don't i mean it's a variance but it's still used for a business you know so just my comment thank you tom anything else from anybody no i'm gonna ask for roll call please tom yes james no donnie yes Kevin? Yes. Josh? No. Candy? No. Motion is tied. It's dead. Second item is the variance on the 2398 East Brush Creek. Applicant requesting that variance from R1 lot from 120 to 100 foot. If I could get a motion. A motion to approve. Second. Motion and second. Discussion. Oh, that'd be great. Yes. Yes. Thank you. The applicant's request of variance required 120 feet of R1 width to 100 due to the location of the flood zone on the south side of the property. Staff is recommending approval of a setback variance. Thank you for that. Since we've already had a motion and a second, I'm going to go ahead and ask for discussion on this one. So 
Since I am seeing none, I will ask for a vote. We'll call. Josh? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? Yes. Candy? Yes. Tom? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Motion approves. Motion approved. Thank you. We're going to adjourn the Board of Zoning Adjustments and move right into the Planning Commission meeting for tonight. And we will start with number one, the Baker subdivision. Who's going to be discussing that one? Thank you, Mark. Uh, the applicant's requesting a preliminary and final subdivision approval for four lots on 37.13 acres of the land. The property is currently zoned R2, and all the lots meet the minimum lot size for one half acre. For a subdivision to be considered for administrative approval, it must be split into less than three lots within five years. As this project is requested for four lots, it must go through the process as a full subdivision process and be considered by the Planning Commission. No streets or other public infrastructure is being proposed within the subdivision. Therefore, it is allowed to be completed as both a preliminary and final plan. Staff recommendations is there is some minor changes that will be needed made to the plat as it's submitted initially as an incidental subdivision, but there are no uh, major concerns. So staff is recommending approval of the Baker subdivisions with conditions. Thank you. And I will open it up for public comment on this one. You can just state your name and- Clint Circles. Clint Circles, thank you, Clint. That's for my, the property in question or that we're discussing is my mother-in-law, Donna Baker. And I may be, and correct me if I'm wrong, we're, it's not for a subdivision. What, what we're wanting to do, or we're, our intent is not to build. Um, so if I'm misunderstanding that, I apologize. So um, my father-in-law, Gene, when he purchased the land 100 years ago, whatever it was, um, all of it was included under one track. And all we want to do is create each home's own property so we can help my mother-in-law sell some of these without having to sell the farm for lack of a better way of putting it, no plan for it. So. Yeah, and I'm Keela Henderson. I'm actually helping her um, with the real estate side of it. And really what we were wanting to do is just, she's already got three residents there for personal and then two smaller homes. And they're on their own septic systems. They've got their own um, mailing addresses. We just want to split those off. And so it's not four. It's just three different houses that are previously already there. We're just wanting to split those off so that she can sell those individually and then sell the land as well. Just to let you guys know, I mean, it's all tied to one application incidental subdivision. Okay, With, yeah, within that, it's lot split. Uh, property line bearing, you know, okay, all that's considered. Before I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're okay. 37, and we've been told it's like 48. Survey, so I just right. want to make sure no, we're you're fine. the right thing. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you all for your, Thank for you. your comments on that. Anybody else? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Motion to approve the Baker subdivision. I'll second. We've got a motion and a second by Tom. Uh, discussion? Are there conditions attached? Yes, if you'll, you'll see the worksheet in there. This is what we normally do administratively uh, here in our own planning area uh, with the this going to the additional lot split amounts. Uh, we had to have this approval through you guys and we attached or Courtney attached the planning worksheet. This is what they will have to fix before we can sign off on it. Very good. I will I will ask then if you want to uh, amend that motion to include. Josh. Was it me? The conditions of the worksheet. Yes, it was you that motioned it and then right. Tom seconded it. Better second. All right. <laughs> I'd like to amend it to uh, add conditions. Yeah, I'll second. And Tom seconded that one. Very good. Now we'll continue with discussion if you've got any other discussion on it. So, 
Oh, oh no, you go right ahead, John. I'm gonna mess that up. No, you didn't. So there's a there's one parcel that has three houses on there, and we're trying to divide that up. Did I understand that right? Yes, that's correct. Any other questions? If not, I'll ask for roll call, please. Donnie? Yes. Tom? Yes. Josh? Yes. Candy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. James? Yes. Motion passes. Motion passes. Number two is the Pam Trucking Large Scale Development applicant is requesting approval of a preliminary large scale development on West Henry and Tawny to expand the current parking lot by 155 additional spaces on the 6.45 acres. There's some parcels involved in there. Um, with that, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to you just that. I'm gonna go ahead and ask for the uh, breakdown on this. Mark, you doing this? Yeah, he can go. Okay. Okay. Uh, State your name and address, please. My name is Avery Bodon. I'm representing our developer um, with the uh, we are the civil engineering firm in DC. That are yeah, that's what we're doing. So um, we are intending on expanding a parking lot to 159 spaces with six ADA spaces, adding a pavilion, and tying in basically to the other side road along. Probably not think of the name of that one, but um, more or less, that is all we're doing at this point. Okay. Ask a question. Hang on just a second. You want to give us your report on it? Y'all have a report on it? Other than what I read? <laughs> well, you know, there's some minor change details to be addressed during the construction phase of the plan review which does not appear to significantly impact the overall design. And therefore the staff is recommending approval of the PAM trucking large scale development. With conditions. With conditions. Thank you. I'll have a motion on this one, please. Motion to approve the PAM transportation LSD with conditions and process notes. I will second that. James seconded that. How about discussion now? Okay, so, well, minor question. Did you say 159 or 155? 159 with six ADA spaces. So our notes say 155. Is that correct, Mark? So we need to correct that. Our six ADA. So that's included with the 159. Yes. So that needs to be. Could have been a scrivener's error. Right. That needs to be adjusted in our notes, right? Or. That okay, um, the the uh, <clears throat> additional changes, Mark, that are remaining, those would be done before what council sees it. Is that where that works? Let's see large scale. Council will not review all that large so scale. It'll it'll just okay, right? But it, it's gonna. How much of this is remaining? Um, well, they have to meet the conditions before we do a pre-construction meeting. Okay. So, and once everything is approved, and this will once it can go through Garver, right? Once they have felt like everything has been met, then we will schedule a pre-construction meeting with them. Gotcha. The city will sign off on the plans, and they can. Yeah. Gotcha. We can get the okay. permits issued. Just wanted to focus on that. Okay. So, if I'm looking at the map right, this is office parking back behind the main building. Yes, sir. So. Well, well, yes, more or less behind the more building to the west, or so. To, yes. Any other questions on the large scale? Really, just have one comment. It and it may not probably doesn't amount to anything. I hate it. Absolutely hate it mm. when there is a whole page full of conditions and process notes. It's like it would be nice if like half of them were met and then they come come before and ask. Other than that, nothing. But I just hate as long as you hate, hate the list those, of conditions. Those nine things. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> the nine plus the six. Mm -hmm. 
Those will be taken care of in the. Well, right. It don't amount to anything. I'm just. The process notes are really on there just to help the applicant understand the next steps. If you don't like to see them on there, we do not have to put them on there. Wow. It's just sometimes helpful for the applicant to understand. No, you can leave them on there. That's, I don't want to. I don't mean to start anything. I just don't want any more hate. <laughs> but we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Any other questions from the commission? So the good thing, it looks like Pam is growing and uh, adding employees, sir. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. All it, you're adding this many parking spaces. Do you, are all of those parking spaces? Are you using that much now? I mean, I, I know I see y'all parking, or maybe not y'all. You you know where I'm but uh, along the side and stuff. Are those people gonna be parking back there in the lot now? That's my understanding. Yes. Okay. And yes. So it's not really adding that many cars or traffic. Just, just kind of mitigating them a little bit better. Okay. Plus, you're they're projecting future growth. I think yes. they were planning on um, in the future adding a, a driving school. Yes, you know we have a couple of phases that we will handle at a later date. So first, get the parking. That's smart. And back to Tom's point, there's there's 153 parking lots standard and then 680a with a total of 159 our paperwork says 155 so does it says 140 149 standard parking spaces 680a yeah. so does that 149 need to be cha changed yeah, be to 153 yeah, in our yeah and just our make sure that gets 149 is best. yeah and josh we'll just make sure that that gets that that's correct on the plan set that we have and four. Thank you. And they can do that. Any other questions? If not, I will ask for roll call. Tom. Yes. Donnie. Yes. Josh. Yes. Kevin. Yes. James. Yes. Candy. Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, number three is the, it's the Maven large scale development, not the new. We'll, we'll eliminate the new. It's just the Maven applicant is requesting approval of a preliminary large scale development um, construction of a 7,833 square foot commercial building on approximately 0.92 acres on lot number three of the Admiral Edition. Sir, did you want to say something or you want to wait until we have? Yeah. Oh, no, you're good. You can stay right there. You can stay right there. No, I'm not running you off at all. Who's staff? What staff is going to report on this one? Thank you, Courtney. Oh, sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button. Yes, so this is a commercial building that is requesting. It's about. It's just under an eight thousand square foot building with parking, um, and the the building will divide be divided out into suites once they have people that want to fill them. Um, so there is a little bit of discussion on whether or not they meet the requirement for the loading zone, for the loading zone now that they replaced um, the loading zone they had with some parking. But that is one of the conditions is we either have to figure that out um, with on the site or they will have to come back and request a variance to make sure that we have adequate loading zone space. So it's pretty straightforward though. The infrastructure is mostly in place because uh, just, just to the east of it is Seven Brew and to the south is another commercial center. Um, if you remember the Elsaw building that came into the south of it, um, all of the drainage was designed with that initial phase, and we'll go into the small detention pond that's behind the that where that um, other large scale development was, just to the south. This is not piping into the bigger development that's behind this, where there are some drainage problems. This is being handled with a separate, smaller detention pond. So staff didn't have any concerns about the drainage at, at this point at all. And the only, like I said, the only real main planning concern is that I just want to make sure that they are indeed meeting the loading zone and parking requirements for the site. Very good. Thank you, Courtney. I'm going to ask for a motion. Motion to approve the Maven 
preliminary LSD with the 16 conditions and the six process notes. Second. Noted and second by Donnie and discussion. Um, I have just one question and this is for Tom. What color is it going to be? It, it It's going to be the same color as that Admiral building. It's, it's the same finishes, yeah. The red brick. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. And what was your name, sir? Uh, Jared Inman with Jorgensen and Associates. Thank you, sir. Oh, I misspoke. I said the LSL. Sorry, it's the Admiral Plaza to the south of it. I apologize. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. I'm good. Tom? I'm good. Candy? I'm good. Okay. Okay. I asked my one and only question. All good. Donnie's all good. Okay, if we're all good, I'm going to ask for roll call, please. Tom? Yes. Candy? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Donnie? Yes. Josh? Yes. James? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, number four on his conditional use permit is the Copart Arkansas is requesting a conditional use permit to allow an auto wrecking salvage yard use within the uh, industrial zoning. And this is going to be Courtney again. Yes. So this is part of the, the larger overall project that we were talking about earlier for, for the Copart. And what it is, is that in industrial, the South, this, it qualifies to be a wrecking or salvage yard under Tawny Town Code and definitions. Therefore, they would have to get a conditional use permit to allow this within the industrial zone. So that is what they're asking for right now is for a conditional use permit to allow the use of a wrecking salvage yard within that industrial area. So um, it's, tw it's on 25 acres. They're requesting the conditional use permit, the variance that was denied, and I do not know if that will change the applicants um, moving forward with this, and then a waiver on some of the curbed areas, um, and then the large-scale development as well. So right now, this is shown on the future land use plan as residential and commercial core, which is the most intense that we uh, that we have and the, uh, uh, along Highway 412. And then the part where they're actually storing vehicles is shown as a light industrial use. So this is marginally in line. Um, they are putting the cars on the area that is shown to be in the light industrial and the driveway and the office will be on that RCC commercial core along 412. Um, it's set pretty far back, honestly, off of Highway 412. So then just like with the variance, we look at all of the, the code that um, is required and the planning commission has the ability to weigh each um, each item as they see fit so is this appropriate for the zoning code and yes a salvage wrecking or junkyard is allowed by a cup in an industrial zone so they're allowed to ask for this um, the next one is that does it conform to all applicable provisions and it does not they are requesting a waiver and a variance that is a normal process uh, do, do we find this that it will be uh, detrimental to public health, safety, and welfare? There should be a minimal impact to public health, safety, or welfare for something like this. The fire marshal is not even requiring an additional hydrant at this time if this moves forward on the large scale development portion um, because of the minimal size of the office and the nature of the business. If we look at the surrounding zoning, it is zoned for industrial to the north, to the east, it's zoned for industrial, and there's some R3. To the south, it is C2 and industrial, and to the west, it is C2 and industrial. Uh, currently, it's a mix of uses. Uh, there's an electrical substation, the utility company, existing RV storage, a uh, small residential, and a, and a lot of vacant open land surrounding this. Um, we looked at the proposed ingress and egress, and they do have one way in on Highway 412, an emergency exit proposed out on Liberty. That is only for emergency purposes only. We have made it clear that there is not to be regular traffic on Liberty Avenue as it cannot currently um, have any of that type of traffic is not up to standard for that. Their landscaping is in compliance with the provisions and they're showing quite a bit of uh, good landscaping and buffering around the edges. And then 
uh, we look in to see if there's going to be any offensive emissions, noise, glare, dust. And according to the applicant's letter, um, this is not a concern for this type of development. And we will, of course, make sure that all the lighting uh, will be cut off type lighting. They only actually plan to have one light, as I understand it, on the on the building itself. This is not a business that will operate um, with lights in the parking area behind. Uh, any additional technical information we can go over at the large scale. Um, at the time, I had received no comments um, from neighbors, but Brad did mention that there are two comments in your packet from a neighbor um, opposed to this project. And uh, we do have a recommendation that based on the current proposal, um, which shows this to be compatible with the future land use plan, the availability of services and the proposed fencing and buffering, we will recommend approval of the Copart conditional use permit request to allow an auto wrecking salvage yard within that industrial zoning. And there are only two conditions that it must proceed through large scale development process and address all the technical information and the project shall develop generally as stated in the applicant's letter. Um, the planning board has the option to approve, deny, or refer the project to the city council. I believe that is still uh, the proper process for a conditional use permit. And if you're, if there's any questions, I do see one applicant online and one standing in the audience as well. Very good. Thank you, Courtney. I will ask for a motion with conditions. Motion to approve the co-part CUP with conditions. Second. Uh, first and second by Donnie and discussion. Courtney, under the applicant's letter about curbing, um, is it staff's thought process there from reading that right that they this does not warrant them not having to do the curbing? So that's what they're requesting the waiver for is to not have to do curbing around the entirety of the property. Um, if you notice in the waiver staff report that's in your uh, file, staff agrees that some of it could be waived, but um, definitely curbing for the driveway, the drop lot and the back um, and, and the areas around the landscape beds. Sorry, let me repeat that. Staff recommends that all landscaping be protected by curbing in the front parking area be curbed, not the entirety of the driveway. Um, but they are showing some curbing at the beginning of the driveway. So that's on the on item number five on the waiver request, which is a, a separate one after the conditional use permit. I know it's it's confusing when we have multiple um, projects. They're all tied together like this. So if you have any other questions, let me know. Ask a question. Yes, sir. You can, Tom. Brad, could you pull up the uh, pull up the property on aerial? Yeah. PC six dash four. Right. Okay, Courtney. Uh, you just did a good job of explaining everything, but just to be clear. Um, we have the access to 412. So uh, the way I understood what you kind of said there was you, what you said was we have an entrance from uh, 412 and that would be curbed up to there's a variance that's requested for a waiver. Do you have an approximate distance from 412 where they are requesting that the curb would stop? A court, what, I may have misheard you. I believe you said there would be curb required, you know, from access 412. And I'm sure that's that's all the design there. Will it go back 100 yards? Will it go back? Let's do this. Let's do this. That's, that's going to be the next waiver on the uh, curbing. So let's just do work on the conditional use right now. I will be busy measuring that out while you guys continue discussion. Right. No, no, no worries. No, that's good. Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss that, uh, the curbing piece on the next okay, waiver. Okay. This, is, this is just the uh, conditional use right now. Sorry, Tom, to cut you off like no, that. That's good. <laughs> no, I won't gavel on him. So I mean, I'll let you, if you want to discuss, um, I want to discuss. I'm not going to cut. Go oh, ahead, Courtney. I'm, I'm sorry, I do have one, one comment. I had forgotten that the code had changed. And as I read that on the staff report, my brain kind of said, wait, that's not right. So I just looked up the code and this actually has to be forwarded to the city council if it is approved. That's correct. 
So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear because that is not what my note said. This is for the large scale development. This is no. just for conditional use. This is just the conditional That's use. That's correct. Okay. okay. We'll have the conditional use, then we'll do a waiver, then we'll do yard, large scale. So those are three separates. And Courtney, we, the committee have gone through, I'm not sure everybody on the committee that's new has gone through. We went through it when, when I first got here, but also for, so for the public. So the conditional use can be changed if it, if they're not meeting certain conditions. Yes. Right. So just for the kind of the vision and the peace of mind for what that conditions, if I, if I could, could you just summarize what sort of things would cross over the lines of, uh, you know, improper use for their conditions and what would, what would be done in those events? So are you asking what conditions the planning commission could add to a conditional use permit? In, in a sense, I mean, there's, I mean, I know it's conditional. Sometimes yes. there are, but there are conditions tied on to it. If there's, if they break the conditions, I know, for example, like RV parks, if they don't meet certain standards, the city can come in and say, you need to cop your dogs or whatever have you. Is there any of that kind of, are those, are there any of those kind of conditions to this? Is that kind of? That staff is not currently recommending any based on the applicant's proposal because they've offered up quite a bit. Right. Do you have a copy of their letter? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> so so because of the of the what they are recommending or what they're saying they're going to do, planning staff didn't feel the need to to add additional conditions. Um, they're already giving buffering and screening. They're already limiting their hours of operation and don't have a lot of customers on site. Um, they provided a turnaround area for us for um, deliveries and made sure that that was clear. So they've already offered up quite a bit um, right. that that is, are normally things that staff would look at to see. And they they just did them on the front end without us asking. So this is a delivery. It's not a retail. That, that means it's not going to be a ton of traffic of retail customers coming in and out. So it's just their delivery system. So that per their per their request, yes. Right. Great. The customer wants to come in and view a vehicle. We do allow it, but they are escorted out there with the bus to look at the vehicle, inspect the vehicle, and then they go back out. We usually don't allow the public in the back unless they have an appointment. With this being a smaller facility, there really won't be a whole lot of traffic. Here. It just to me the very the conditions they put on themselves they look it 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 looks to be very clean very orderly very neat I mean for what they're asking I think they put a lot upon themselves for that yes sir it's up to me to keep it that way it's my job so any other questions from commission. If not, I'll ask for roll call. Tom? Yes. James? No. Andy? No. Donnie? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Josh? No. Motion is a tie and dead. Um, moving on to number five, the waiver for Copart, Arkansas, I've requested a waiver of curbing requirements for the off-street parking drives landscape areas. Courtney? Um, sorry. Is there, is there any reason to continue to hear this since the CUP was denied? think there would be, but I was going to move on and. Uh, I mean, I it, I guess if it is appealed to the city council, then. 
we could would those items be appealed to city council or would those items be attached if they're i mean i did uh, just looking at it i don't think it's it's going to be a it's going to be a waste of minutes if we go through the next two items in my in my opinion i i agree unless the yeah I, because i think that the city council is going to have to weigh in now yeah, I believe the conditional use permit can be appealed to the city council. Well, I, sorry, Brad. Um, that was my that was my mis yeah. misspeaking earlier. It actually, um, following a recommendation to approve or deny the application, the planning commission shall forward the application recommendation to the city council, and the city council shall have final authority to accept the recommendation. Um, so. The city council actually has final say on the conditional use permit. You have just recommended to deny it to the city council. That is the planning commission's recommendation. So just going through it, if it goes through city council and they approve, does it come back through to us for the waivers and large scale then? Yes, yes. Okay, but great. that's what I'm asking. Do we want to make a decision on those tonight or wait until city council I think we probably just need to probably table those two items until uh, until the city council if it goes to city council for their uh recommendation correct okay that sounds good and also i think it'll give the applicant time to um reassess since the variance was denied variances cannot be appealed to city council they would have to be appealed to the circuit uh or, i'm sorry to the court to a court um board of zoning adjustment hearings are final and I believe that that is how your code reads but I will look that up very quickly I don't know if this is correct but I'm just going to ask for a, a, a motion on number five to to table that item and then we'll go to number six just to make it on records motion to table uh waiver request five second and roll call Josh yes Kevin yes James yes Candy Yes. Tom. Yes. Donnie. Yes. And I will ask the same for item number six, please. Motion to table item six, the uh, LSD for Copart. Second. Motion second. Roll call. Donnie. Yes. Tom. Yes. Josh. Yes. Candy. Yes. Kevin. Yes. James. Yes. Okay. We have the finish that part. How about the uh, February building activity report? Anybody got any questions on that specific? item in your packet. We must not have paid our uh, copier bill because I don't see red on here. So we're all, <laughs> we're all in the black. So we must be doing really, really yeah. good. <laughs> awesome. I'll give you a moment just to look at it. And then as you're looking at that, I'm going to ask just kind of the current planning report too is out there, which kind of gives an activity of each of that, each of the projects we have going on right now on the last sheet of your packet. I would just make a comment. Yes, sir. You can look at the uh, commercial valuation is kind of what I tend to look at, but um, big drop for, uh, I don't know, big drop, but just a little bit of a drop there between January and February. Um, obviously, we want to work towards getting uh, more businesses in and uh, for retail sale, for, for sales, um, but uh, I kind of sense in general commercials because of the kind of the economics we're in right now. I, I sense we're, I see good things happening in, in certain areas. Um, overall, a bit of slow down, but uh, I, I think that kind of mirrors what I'm seeing right here. Hopefully there's other permits that are coming and um, things that will be approved, but it's just something to observe there. I invite your friends to come open a business here. <laughs> Any comments on either one of those? Okay. 
If not, I'll ask for commission comments and I'll start down with Candy. Um, Any comments, Candy? No comments. Very good. Tom? Uh, Mark, I have two questions. The first one is uh, if, if the Quipart would have been uh, sold, there's tax revenue from that, correct? For those sales? As a business, yes. Significant business there. We just yes. we just got through saying no to a significant revenue opportunity here. I just want everybody to know what they just did. Point taken. All right. Secondly, I'm disappointed in that. But secondly, uh, just um, I I did ask, but it's okay. We'll get to it next time. If you could put me on uh, the board of adjustments to discuss bills of assurance versus performance bonds um, for future developments, just to have the assurances that people do what they say they're going to do in our developments. I didn't follow up with you on putting that on, but if you could get me on that for next time, we can kind of talk about that. Mark, let you kind of educate us on what those, let you educate us on what, you, you know, what those are. And uh, we might move towards doing that to help protect our developments in the future. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Tom. What out here, Donnie? Uh, no comment. No comment. James? Um, thank you to all the, everybody that is here tonight. Um, as always, appreciate citizens' inputs and coming. Uh, I'd like to thank staff for a great job once again. And that's it. And Josh? Just comment uh, or quote. If you don't think too good, don't think too much, Ted Williams. <laughs> Repeat that. If you don't think too good, don't think too much. Baseball player for the Boston Red Sox. Says it all right. Best hitter in the league <laughs> at the time. Very good. And I apologize. I didn't get staff. Did y'all have any comments down there, Brad? Yeah, I'm just going to echo Tom what he was saying about our, our revenue. Uh, we have several. Uh, commercial projects that we'll be doing some permitting on. So hopefully by April, that uh, evaluation is going to be going up. We got AutoZone, Goddard, stuff that you guys have already approved. Uh, we will be doing some permitting on once we have the final say so on it. So. I do want to mention that. Uh, don't forget for those ones that are in Mark, the, could you pull uh, that mic plan? in front of your voice a little bit? Pull that mic, yeah. pull that mic down to your mouth. So I can hear you. <laughs> Chew on it, I think. <clears throat> the members of the uh, comp plan draft people, uh, you know, we're meeting next week, so don't forget that. Okay. Um, I do think, hopefully, I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but I was hoping that uh, at the next uh, uh, planning commission that we would vote on it. Uh, we might not be ready to do that, but we'll see how it goes. I know that the uh, council would like to get that thing passed and so we can start moving forward here. Do want to mention too, as you saw in the staff, reports on projects. Um, there will be a tech committee meeting, which will be next Tuesday. So if you're interested in that at 10 o'clock, Brad will be sending something out on that. We'll have a final on Veneto, along with a large scale development out on uh, um, 412, I believe it is, and uh, take care of that. The other thing, just for for your knowledge, because I know that part of a part of a lot of discussions that we've had, especially in the comp plan, is to do with roads. Um, we are, uh, at least, I'm going to be submitting to the council at the next cow meeting two projects that we're going to seek um, funding for through the Northwest Arkansas uh, Regional Planning. Um, one is, is the left-hand turn signal project along with widening here on 412 and Barrington. And then, um, the other one is, is an actual pedestrian tunnel underneath 412. So, uh, if you're interested in seeing any of that stuff, that will be at the council meeting. We'll see if the council will give 
approval to kind of move forward because they'll have to pass a, a resolution to move forward on that. But it's it's roughly almost between the two of them, six million dollars for both projects. Where would the tunnel be located? You will have to ask that question. <laughs> two proposed sites. One is over here off the park area. The one is pretty close to the intersection. Is that all you got, Mark? Is that what you want? That's what I like that. I do like that. Okay, thank you. And I have just one, I just one thing. Last night there was a 1% uh, discussion here it's, uh, with city council and it was talking about our 1% sales tax that we have. And just to let you know, we are seeing a decline monthly of about 35 to 50,000, somewhere around that time time range. So anywhere from 35 to 50,000 a month difference than last year on our 1% uh, tax coming in. So that is uh, a significant, we really don't know where it's coming from um, or where the deficits hitting us, um, but it's a, it's a true deficit. So you calculate that over the 12 months, it's, uh, it's, it's taking a lot of money out of our, out of their budget that they've budgeted expecting to get that money. Um, so that's really all I've got. Comprehensive plan that is April 6th at 10 o'clock. It's a Thursday. Um, and there's a lot lot involved in that comprehensive plan. I mean, roads, re I mean, there's just a lot going on with it. So it's going to be a, um, once we get it in, hopefully before June, it'll be a, a good plan to, to be able to, to go off of, I do believe. And that is all I have for tonight. So I'm going to ask.